Angela Williams, and then please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the numerous blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Bless the city of Norfolk, bless every citizen who resides within its boundaries, and every city employee who works to make our city great. Bless every family that is represented here today. Father, bless our mayor, city manager, and this council as we labor together in the calling of public service. Give us the wisdom to govern fairly and ethically with equality, integrity, compassion, and compassion, and allow us to represent our city in a spirit of excellence. Please guide us through these difficult economic times and give us the strength and wisdom we need to make the decisions that face us. These and all other blessings we ask in your son's name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. The clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Protegiru? Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smeagol? Here. Dr. Wibley? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to excuse the Vice Mayor Anthony Burford, please. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Here. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams, Aye. Mr. Wynn, Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. We're glad to have you here. Uh, for the benefit of those of you who do not regularly attend our council uh, meetings, uh, the first thing we're going to do tonight, we have a couple of ceremonial matters. After we're finished with them, we'll move directly to the public hearings. There are two public hearings scheduled this evening. At the conclusion of the public hearings, we'll move directly to the consent agenda. There are seven items on the consent agenda. The council is permitted to vote on all of these matters in one vote. We may do that, or, or a council member may ask to vote on one of these matters separately. Then we'll move to the regular agenda. We have a number of regular agenda items this evening. There are 17, and we're, we have two or three add-ons involving appointments and some personnel. Uh, at the conclusion of the regular agenda, oh, by the way, we'll vote on all those matters in just the way they are numbered on the printed docket. At the conclusion of the regular agenda, if any member of the public would like to address the City Council on a non-agenda item, if it's anything that you want to talk about that's not on the printed docket, you'll be given that opportunity. But in order to have your name called, the first thing you have to do is sign a slip of paper, which the City Clerk's Office has made available in the lobby out behind the uh, City Council Chambers before the meeting began. We do have um, two ceremonial matters uh, this evening before we begin our regular agenda. I would uh, acknowledge the presence of Sheriff Bob McCabe, and Sheriff McCabe is here to uh, for some jail reaccreditation recognition. Sheriff, would you like to come forward, please? I see the Commonwealth Attorney is here as well. Greg, thank you for being here. Greg Underwood. <clears throat> uh, good, good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, Council Members, Mr. Jones. Uh, it's my pleasure. I'm going to be introducing uh, Gary Dillon, who's the program manager for the Division of Law Enforcement. He oversees the accreditation for the over 400 law enforcement agencies uh, in the Commonwealth. And the protocol of this accreditation uh, process is, is they, when, when you get a, a, either accredited or reaccredited, uh, they make the presentations in front of either the city council or in front of the, the county administrators. Uh, and obviously, I'm very proud of the fact that uh, this is our second reaccreditation. Um, and so we've been accredited. Basically, it says you, you have policy procedures and you're following them, and they bring in people, and I'll let Gary, uh, you know, briefly, he has a very brief uh, presentation, but uh, uh, obviously couldn't do it without the over 500 men and women. I'm just merely representing them. I have uh, members of my senior staff here in attendance as well. So with that, I'd like to bring uh, Gary on. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. I bring greetings to you tonight from our director, Mr. Garth Wheeler, and from the Secretary of Public Safety, Ms. Marlon Decker. I'm here to recognize your sheriff's office once again for their com continued commitment to law enforcement excellence by participating in Virginia's law enforcement accreditation program. In Virginia, law enforcement agencies can seek and achieve accredited status, but they're certainly not required to. This fact further distinguishes your sheriff's office for being 
for being uh, willing to be measured by and compared to the best in this profession. Our program was formed in the early 1990s to give agencies of all sizes in the Commonwealth an opportunity to demonstrate that they meet or exceed over 180 commonly accepted standards for efficient and effective agency operation. Since then, as the sheriff mentioned, out of just over 400 eligible law enforcement agencies, only 86 of those are accredited. Uh, your sheriff's office is one of those, and they were the first in Southside Hampton Roads, first sheriff's office to be accredited by this program. Recently, a team of assessors visited your sheriff's office, and they issued their report to the commission uh, advising they had found this agency to once again be in 100% compliance with all applicable standards as required by our accreditation program. In January, the commission met and un unanimously approved your sheriff's office for reaccreditation. On behalf of the Department of Criminal Justice Services and the Secretary of Public Safety, I congratulate the entire Sheriff's Office. I congratulate Sheriff McCabe, Accreditation Managers Sergeant John Woodward and Sergeant Heather Richardson for their attention to detail in maintaining the volumes of files necessary to prove compliance. Uh, we require that the agency meets the standards and policy, and then our assessors verify that they're following the policy. Any department can have a manual, but we make sure that they prove to us that they're following that manual, and that's what they're doing. So, Sheriff, if you'd like to come up, I'll present their certificate of accreditation to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. This document certifies that the City of Norfolk Sheriff's Office came before the Virginia Law Enforcement Professional Standards Commission on January 12, 2012, and has met the requirements set forth by the said commission and is there, therefore certified as an accredited agency for a period of four years. Sheriff, this is your third award. Congratulations. Thank you. Sheriff, we appreciate you uh, bringing this. Uh, to our attention as well, and we appreciate all the good work that led to this accreditation and all the good work that all of the employees of the Sheriff's Department perform on a, on a daily basis. We're understandably proud of your office and the way the jail is run and the, you know, the, the daily outreaches into the community that your office performs is trying to help us get through our, our, you know, be a better city. So thanks a lot, Sheriff. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. that. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. You. Thank okay. you. But we have uh, one very special uh, resolution and a guest here with us tonight. And we have with us our Harvey Chapel, who has been our the city of Norfolk's chief uh, legal counsel for our water system for over 30 years, and 50. This says 31, but I thought it was longer, <laughs> that, that's uh, Harvey. Yeah, but Harvey has been, uh, I've, I'm going to read the resolution, but I, I've read it. and. And uh, it really doesn't do you justice, Harvey. I mean, I, um, I mean, not only am I aware because, you know, of, of the fact that I practice law, some too, uh, of your standing in the state legal circles, but also in national legal circus, circles with the American Bar Association and and uh, the high regard you are mm. held in, not only your law firm, but I mean, but you uh, as an individual in the country and across the state. And here in Norfolk, I mean, your legal advice to us has been extraordinary in trying to maintain really the crown jewel of, uh, of all the assets that the city owns. Our, our director of utilities is sitting there with you. I, somewhere about 900,000 people on a daily basis if, uh, that uh, drink from this system. It's one of the strongest systems uh, anywhere. And um, you have helped protect that system. You've helped us grow the system. Um, before I was mayor, I actually chaired this something called this Water Committee Task Force or whatever we called it way back then, and um, saw uh, up up close and personal Harvey's uh, very uh, sound advice to us on any number of ways that our system could be attacked either by the state or by other localities, protecting our watershed, protecting the water quality, uh, the Lake Gaston. Um, I mean, fight is not uh, is not too heavy a word. It was really almost a war back then. We had at one point, I remember, we had a compact that both the, the, the state of Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia, and the state of North Carolina had entered into, and uh, with the city of Virginia Beach and the city of Norfolk, and we were trying to decide how to, you know, make sure that we try to accomplish all the good that was being 
you know, that would the lake gas and water would, would bring here, but also at the same time protect the citizens of Norfolk's asset and our ability to sell water uh, across this region, and not just in the sub-regions, but anywhere that we wanted to. And you were just, just terrific uh, back then, Harvey. And, and um, Harvey was always uh, willing to, uh, to give us his very best advice. So, Harvey, can you come to the podium? And You know, at 85 years of age, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I don't move around as rapidly as I did. At you, well, you look great, Harvey. I mean, you, we don't see you as much as we used to. I'm see. delighted to see you and a certain of members of the city council I've known before. It's just a pleasure. Harvey, I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to let understand our city attorney, and we're going to excuse him to take you to dinner. <laughs> so, <laughs> Harvey and Phil Trapani were, were great friends as well. I mean, there's a whole history of relationships that Harvey... We can talk about some of the, you know. I would have just mentioned stories. to you that uh, my first experience with this lovely city was when you were building your your big uh, stadium. What did you call it? The Harbor Park. Yeah. No, 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 no. No. Scope. 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 That's right, way back then. And uh, I was representing Daniel Construction Company that were mm -hmm. putting it up. And a bunch of rod busters, one of the groups that were building it, went on strike, and I flew down in the, one of the Daniel Plains and met with a very young Phil Trapani, and uh, we became fast friends. But it's very obvious that something had to be done, so I got back on the private plane and flew to Baltimore to meet with a federal representative and tell them what a problem we had, that this, this was a big project for the city. And he got on the telephone, and happily he did this because he was a William & Mary alumnus just the way I was, <laughs> called up the leadership of that group and literally chewed them out. The strike was stopped. I flew back to Norfolk and, and saw a number of right. you folks, and we were all pleased. That was roughly 50 years ago, and I have just been pleased and honored and my firm to represent this wonderful city. And so uh, I'm, I'm willing to take another shot at five years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to say the, the pleasure's been all ours. I mean, it, it really has. I mean, you've, you have given us the best advice over time Thank that we so uh, could have had. And so we are forever in your debt. Our water system, the, I mean, all of the, the assets that have been protected over time through your Council, and there was a time when, every, as you know, everybody was trying to raid our system. Every, they wanted to break it up. We had battles on every front. Yeah, yeah. Some of our dear close neighbors now were not so close then. No, that, that's right. That's a different story. But, Harvey, the resolution reads, whereas Har R. Have Harvey Chapel Jr., a top water law expert in the Commonwealth of Virginia, has provided legal guidance for the city of Norfolk's water system for more than 31 years, whereas R. Harvey Chapel Jr.'s wise counsel and tenacious advocacy enabled Norfolk's water system to become the second largest water purveyor in the Commonwealth of Virginia, whereas long-term water contracts that support the economic vitality of Southside Hampton Roads were developed and executed with his assistance. Whereas throughout his tenure as Chief Water Law Counsel, R. Harvey Chapel Jr., displayed a strong commitment to the welfare of the Norfolk water system and worked tire tirelessly to ensure its continued strength and vitality. Whereas after more than 31 years of service as Norfolk's expert legal counsel, in all water system related matters. R. Harvey Chapel Jr. has retired from the active practice of law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that one, section one, that the Council of the City of Norfolk does hereby extend its thanks and appreciation to R. Harvey Chapel Jr. for more than 31 years of outstanding service to the citizens of the City of Norfolk through his work as expert legal counsel in all water system related <coughs> matters, and that this resolution shall be in effect from and after its adoption that a copy thereof be presented to R. Harvey Chapel Jr. And so we're going to vote on this, Mr. Chapel, if you don't mind, so we can have this in a, as a permanent uh, mention in our records. So call the roll. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Harvey, let me give this to you. And, and, and uh, if you have any old stories you want to tell, we're glad to hear from them, or we, you can... Uh, the, the city attorney is can't wait to take you to dinner. He's been mm. leaving me messages that Harvey's coming. <laughs> Harvey's coming. And so uh, this is, we're... This is a, a high honor. <coughs> Thanks. 
greatly appreciate, but I, I would like to suggest to you that I have not departed from the active practice. Of law. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. 61 years, yes, and I, I will have. continue to do it as long as I can. Good for you, And I, I'll be, be delighted to represent this wonderful city. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Harvey. Okay. I'd like to. All right. Yeah. I, I also would like to say that uh, when I first became a member of the council in the early 1990s, I have happened to serve on the uh, water committee, and, and Harvey, uh, as Paul said earlier, uh, really led us through some tough negotiations. Most memorable to me in my tenure would be the late Gaston. And Harvey, you represent to me what's called a real Southern gentleman. And I just say God bless you and hope he keeps you healthy and safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Harvey. Okay. If the, if the council will, uh, doesn't mind, the uh, city attorney's going to take his leave here. And he's going to. So if I may. Before, okay. Oh, no, wait, wait. I'm, before you vote. Uh, Harvey, yes. uh, I think. If I may. Uh, Harvey, uh, Kristen, Paul, and Speaker and I have been worried that this day would come one time, but you've left us in, in, in very, very great shape. The region couldn't have had a better advocate for water than you. The entire region owes you a debt of, of thanks. And for such a peaceful person, you'd probably be surprised that uh, Harvey was not afraid of a fight. Um, a, 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 but he's had the wisdom of trying to avoid them when he could and, and only fighting them when he was pretty sure he was going to win. And I've watched this for some time, and Harvey, I don't know if it's that your judgment was good and you knew what you were going to win, or you were just such a better advocate than the other side that we kept winning. I'm not sure which it was. <laughs> well, now that the uh, Suffolk Wells are re-permitted, and uh, we haven't announced that yet, we've got a few I's to dot and T's to cross that the system's pretty much at, at peace and in good shape, and I too join in the well wishes for your semi-retirement. We'll miss your advice. All right, great. All right, Harvey, please. Thank you, Speaker. Nice to see you. See you, Paul. Okay. <coughs> and Wayne, you want to come on up and, you know. Who, who would be up here? There was a time you couldn't go on the federal bench without Harvey. Yeah. 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 Okay, we'll move then directly to the public hearings. The public hearing one, please. <laughs> Public hearing one scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on February 14, 2012, to hear comments on the issuance of the general obligation bonds of up to $180 million to fund the cash flow needs of the general capital, water, wastewater, and stormwater capital improvement programs. <coughs> there are no members of the public who are signed up to address this, this issue, so you can call the roll. I have an ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale by the City of Norfolk, Virginia of up to $180 million in general obligation capital improvement <coughs> bonds dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. <coughs> Public hearing two, please. Public hearing two scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council <coughs> of state law to hear the consolidation of various voting precincts and polling locations. Just a second. Uh, Ellis James, please. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. My name is Ellis James, a proud supporter of our city manager, Mr. Jones. I'm still smiling, Mr. Jones. We are too. Um, I reside at 2021 Ken Lake Place here in the city of Norfolk. I want to thank uh, Mr. Riddick but also the other members of the council for focusing on what could have been a nasty little situation in this era of voter suppression and other things that are traveling down the highway. Um, it's extremely important to me as a precinct captain and having worked in Baron Black for a number of years to see that we are taking note of what could be an explosive uh, problem in the future. And it's not just the November election, although the focus is on that. Uh, we have another very important election that's coming forward uh, in not too many months. So this is something that we need to do, and I think it's important for the public to indicate whether or not it supports it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I have two questions to ask or a question and statement. Um, it says that the ordinance shall be in effect from and after its adoption. 
Um, we do have two elections um, coming up, a Republican primary and then the um, May elections. I know that the, there's some rules that say that it's, uh, there's a time period in order to notify voters. So I'm assuming that those two elections are exempt with this. So this won't take effect until November's election um, or any primaries or anything that happened in uh, August with the congressional. Okay, and I'm just going to voice my concern again about the Titus Town and Tucker House combination. That precinct was in a, uh, a a center that serves people that cannot get out to vote, and I just want to make sure that we have a commitment um, from our local electoral board that we will do whatever we can to make sure that absentee ballots <coughs> are um, given to those folks because they they are not folks that can cross necessarily cross the street to the Titus Town um, uh, Rec Center, so um, from Tucker House. And uh, I understand it needs to be consolidated. It's very low numbers, but I just want to make sure we are really proactive in making sure that we get that taken care of for those folks that are in that, right. that building. Thank you, Tom. Good. Good statement. Okay, thank you. Go ahead and call the roll. I have an ordinance to amend and reordain certain sections of Chapter 14.1 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 and to repeal certain sections and subsections of Chapter 14.1 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 so as to consolidate the Tucker House and Titustown Center precincts into the Titustown precinct, the Larchmont Recreation Center and Old Dominion precincts into the Old Dominion precinct, the Lafayette and Willard precincts into the Willard precinct, the Emanuel and Lambert's Point precincts into the Lambert's Point precinct, the Sherwood Recreation Center precinct, and the Sherwood School Precincts into the Sherwood Precinct, and the Norview Methodist and the Norview Middle School Precincts into the Norview Precinct, and so as to change the name of the Bayview School Precinct to the Bayview Precinct, and change its voting place, and so as to establish the voting places for the consolidated precincts. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. <coughs> thank, thank you, Breck. The consent agenda. There are seven items here. Would any uh, member of council like to have any one of these matters uh, considered separately? All right, call the roll, please. Approve the consent agenda, Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1? R1 is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an automobile repair facility on property located at 1550 Azalea Garden Road. This item was passed by on January 24, and the Planning Commission, by 7-0 vote, recommends approval. Um, Alden Murphy, Mr. Murphy, is here as the applicant to, to answer any questions. Right, Mr. Murphy, will you? Are you? Okay. All right, thank you. If anyone has any questions, Mr. Murphy. Is his issue resolved? We had an issue. I'm, I'm taking it we got his issue resolved with zoning because I think we were ready to vote on it, and there was some issue that he had. Did we get that resolved? The roof. The overhang. Yes. 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 Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Montague, did you want to add something to it? <coughs> okay. All right, then we're ready to go. All right. Call the Dispense roll. with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R2. An ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale of up to $250 million in water revenue refunding bonds to refund earlier bond issues of the City of Norfolk. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R3. <laughs> An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an eating and drinking establishment on property located at 411 West York Street by 5-0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or four. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit off-lot parking on property located at 4392 Pretty Lake Avenue by 5-0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. <laughs> Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5. 
an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an entertainment establishment on property located at 257 Granby Street. A 5 0 vote planning commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for <coughs> and adopt. Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a used merchandise sales establishment located at 5038 East Princess Anne Road. And by a 5 2 vote, the Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protogero? If I could ask you, why, what were the two dissents? What was the reason behind that? That question exactly. Great minds, Mr. Reddick. They, okay. used, Mr. they opposed the use of citywide. You oppose what? Frank, the question Frank. is, there seemed to be a, a <coughs> split on the Planning Commission. Why was that? The two dissenting votes, it's exactly as Mr. Spiegel indicated, um, came from two members of the Planning Commission who routinely object to use merchandise establishments anywhere in the city. Can you give me an example? Who do what? Who, wait a minute, who do what, Frank? Object and, or, and recommend denial of used merchandise establishments anywhere in the city. Okay. It's not a secondhand store. Okay. I mean, it, it, would an antique <laughs> store fall within No, sir, an antique store is a different use under our code. Likewise, this is not a flea market, which was a concern that was raised right. uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, flea market, you'd have multiple dealers, and that requires a different special exception. Can you tell me who were the two that descended? Uh, Mr. Fraley and um, Ms. Stone. Thank you, Frank. But they have no, uh, once we do this, they can, uh, they couldn't put a flea market in, which was a big concern, but any use, they could put a, a thrift shop or. You could use a thrift shop here. The other thing that was a concern with council when this was presented to you at your informal session was used tires. And so a condition was added by the city attorney's office to prohibit the sale of used tires. But the neighborhood is fine with. The neighborhood provided a letter of support for this, yes. Not knowing what used items they could sell there, just a general letter of support? The neighborhood letter of support was a blanket letter of support um, indicating that they would like to see this in this location in order to try to stimulate some activity uh, in this small commercial area. The people who are asking for this, have they done this kind of... No, sir. The, this is not... We don't have a... Uh, a user for this at this point. This is the property owner who is, is looking at doing this in hopes that he will be able to get a user. And see, that was the issue I had with this when we, when we when you guys brought it to us in informal session. We don't know, I mean, used, that's just too, to me it's just too broad. Sorry, Frank. Okay. Is the property owner here? I don't believe so. The um, Civic League, if you read the letter, did not take a formal vote on it. Yeah. It just says a, that there was general support from the, on the concept behind it. Yeah, but see, we still have no way of knowing what concept was presented to them. I mean, I, it's just broad to me. No, it it's does. Used items, it's just broad to me where you could end up with a, yeah. Thrift shop or you know, nothing against thrift shops, but I mean, we've In the letter from um, Ron, um, he said, your presentation outlined your commitment to maintaining and supporting locally owned and operating businesses in your commercial properties in Fox Hall. There was general discussion about the advisability of various types of businesses that would enhance our neighborhood. One of the possibilities outlined was a thrift store, typically the kind of business that provides gently used clothing, furniture, accessories, um, et cetera, for sale for the public. So it, it was a general, it was general presentation to them about what he was expecting to be in there. You know, if there is some concern of the, you know, here in the council, we could delay this for a couple of weeks until. Or we could ask them to come back yeah. when they had a specific we get user. A better. Yeah. My problem is that we don't have a specific use. Right. Yeah. We have a generally and. Yep. Why don't we continue the matter generally till we yeah. get some more information yeah. up here and we'll, instead of putting it out in two weeks, yeah. we'll just continue it generally and then we'll try to have a better discussion with, with the property owners to 
maybe we can strengthen the ordinance too about I what think he can't he bring the tenant. I think we would have a shot. <coughs> he, didn't. he didn't have a tenant. You don't have one. Have a tenant. Yeah. When he gets a tenant. Yeah. yeah. Tell him we're, we're open minded time. about the right tenant. <coughs> this yeah. No, I know. I, I believe okay. that the property owner, it's exactly the situation Mr. Smeagle is describing. He does not have a tenant at this point, but he wants to be able to lease it and go out and try to recruit a tenant saying all the approvals are in place. Once a special exception ordinance is approved by city council, an applicant has six months to activate that special exception or it is null and void. Still, the point is, I think we would be amenable to approving the right tenant under this special exception or zoning or whatever. One last question, just so I can make sure. And Frank, let's say we voted on this today. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, the owner is asked for it. A tenant comes in gets his business license, starts running it, tenant leaves, special exception remains with the property in this case? Yes, sir. The only special exceptions um, that do not run with property are our ABC special exceptions. And there we are <coughs> unique in the Commonwealth uh, with Richmond and that the special exceptions expire with a change of ownership or a change of management. But all other special exceptions, just as any other land use regulation, run with property. So once we approve it it's and, and they take a tenant, it's done. And any other tenant could come in mm -hmm. and use that, that existing special exception. Uh, I mean, this is right. For, I, I can, uh, but he would have to lease it with our special exception within six months? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. If, if special exception is approved, he has six months to find a tenant. So it seems to make more sense for him to perhaps wait to get a tenant and then come back. I mean, you know, otherwise he'd have to come back again if he didn't lease it right away. Or if there were six months between tenants, then it would... would be two years between tenants. Two years. Two years between tenants. If he had a strong tenant who was interested in the location and he made his offer contingent upon a special exception from the council, he could bring <coughs> this action back before us and they would not have, he would not be bound to a contract if we did not approve the special exception, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, I can, I but, can vote on it today, it's, but my hand's not going to go through. Yeah, me either. I would say we would continue it generally. All right, we're going to, then the, we yeah. will, the motion is to continue generally. Uh, we find ourselves in this position all the time, though. This isn't anything new, I mean, about right. these types of special exceptions. So, all right, we will uh, ask that the matter be continued generally, please. Mr. Protegera? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R7. R7 is an ordinance granting a downtown development certificate to permit the change of use from office <coughs> to medical office on property located at 129 West Virginia Beach Boulevard by 4 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. And Robin <coughs> Thomas uh, is here. Robin, where are you? There you are. Okay, great. Robin's here to answer questions if, any, if we have any. All right. Thanks, Robin. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8. An ordinance approving a landlord's release in favor of Town Bank for the benefit of Norfolk Fest Events Limited and authorizing the city manager to execute the release on behalf of the city of Norfolk. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? I abstain, please. R9. An ordinance Aye. accepting a grant award in the amount of $324,800 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the funds for the fiscal year 2011 Port Security <coughs> Grant Program for the purchase of equipment to enhance port security. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R10. An ordinance accepting a grant in the amount of $170,000 from Smart Beginning Southampton Roads to recruit and sponsor eight early learning centers to participate in the Small Business Development Project to recruit and sponsor 13 <laughs> early learning centers to implement the quality rating improvement system and to award 35 teacher scholarships to early education right. professionals and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the grant funds and $100,000 in local matching funds for the Smart Beginnings program. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Uh, and somebody ought to say what a great uh, grant this is, by the way. 
uh, from Smart Beginnings. It is right. great. It's a great, great, great grant. grant. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for saying. It. <laughs> Felt like somebody ought to say it. Somebody ought to say it. But, I mean, this is really good stuff. This is. Uh, you want us to vote on that, that it's yeah. a great grant? It's a no. We're going to R11. Okay. An ordinance approving a grant application in the amount of $40,000 to the Commonwealth of Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services to support the continuation of the Virginia Sexual and Domestic Violence Victims Fund Grant Program for the position of domestic violence caseworker in the office of the Norfolk Commonwealth's attorney in appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the grant funds for the position. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protegero. I just want to recognize, I know Greg Underwood's here, and I know Paul recognized Greg, uh, our Commonwealth attorney, but also with Greg is Phil Evans and Linda Connell, uh, both uh, 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 deputies in that office that have done a great job. I know both Phil and Linda are very passionate about what they do, uh, and at times that we may disagree in a courthouse, uh, uh, I do believe that they are really the best of the best, and I think Greg's done a great job in uh, uh, with that office uh, in being able to get some wonderful personnel there uh, and uh, and has done a great job with this. Uh, uh, I can tell you that in dealing with these cases, uh, having sat in J&D court for a period of time and, uh, and having even defended some of these cases, that uh, your office does a, a terrific job and having this is, uh, really works well. So, uh, again, I thank you for the work that you do and your vision uh, which is very good. Uh, aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? It's a great grant. Aye. <laughs> Dr. Wibley? That's what I, I just get. wanted to thank you for the update that we all received about Thanks. domestic violence in our city. I thought if you all had a chance to <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. look that over, it really was very telling about some of the issues <coughs> that our families um, deal with and really dis disp dismisses a lot of the stereotypes I think we have about domestic violence. Aye. Ms. Williams? Um, I'd just like to say that I can appreciate the work that um, the Commonwealth Attorney's Office does in terms of their advocacy for women. A lot of times uh, some of these issues are not taken seriously. And so thank you for being an advocate for women and for domestic violence victims. I vote aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R12? An ordinance approving a grant application in the amount of $130,728 to the Commonwealth of Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services to support the continuation of the <coughs> Violence Against Women VSTOP program, appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of $46,392 in grant funds and $48,114 in, in a local cash match and accepting $36,222 as an in-kind service match for the program. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R13. An ordinance to amend and reordain section 45-13 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 relating to trees and other vegetation so as to allow residents to apply for a permit to prune and trim city trees. Can I ask one question about this? Is there a big demand for people to come get a permit, take training so they can oh, trim the suckers off the crepe myrtle between the walk and the yeah. road? That I mean, crepe myrtle tree is pretty special, isn't it? Right. I mean, do we think people are going to do this? I, mean, I, I don't think they're going to do it right. Asked. I don't <laughs> think they're going to do it right. Most people want the city to come do it for them. I mean, I, I just, you know, yeah, how much I'm is fine with this, but I just, you know, is it, was there an outpouring of, of concern about this? They do it anyway. More, more of just a response to the residents being able to do this, but as you mentioned, <laughs> there is going to be training. But they're going to come down and get a permit. They have to pay for the permit? I'm not sure if there's a cost to the permit. And then they're going to take training yeah, so that they can right. walk out That's in right. their 50 foot lot and trim. Okay. Oh, trim a oh, crepe myrtle. You know, um, on the south side, we have a lot. during the, um, through the south side task force, <coughs> Berkeley <laughs> and Campus Dollar Heights were inundated with overgrown <coughs> crepe myrtle trees. Right. And so they sent uh, a gentleman out uh, from Parks and Forestry to show the residents how to, uh, you know, trim the crepe myrtle trees. Uh, I, for one, that don't believe that... Uh, that it's a good idea because a lot of people don't like trees and a lot of people don't like crepe myrtle trees, especially when they, you know, the blooms happen to fall on automobiles and things of that nature. So I just don't think it's a great idea personally. Is there any liability if they climb a tree and, and 
Well, they, they, they and break their neck trying to top a... <laughs> no, they wouldn't they climb the, the tree. It's restricted to you standing on the ground and using pruning. Okay. I'm, I'm fine with it. I just... Joe Green, you tell I'd like Joe to Green. track how many people come down and, 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 and engage in this. Can we have a Joe look Green back up at we'll do. several months yeah. from now? We do get quite a bit of a lot of questions about the crepe myrtles, though, and, and sending the city out to, to trim them and all that kind of I've heard that. Because the garbage trucks. On a regular basis they, about uh, the crepe myrtle trees. So, I agree, I agree. And they just, you know, people are annoyed because they can't do it themselves. So. Well, are we so overwhelmed no, that we can't get to it? Is that one issue? That's an issue. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, would that be, Mr. Manager, would that be something Daryl would answer? Are we so, I mean, I've, I've got a little bit of a problem with it. Are we so overwhelmed yeah. that we can't get to the trees that people are asking? Or, yeah. I mean, I. No. It, I well, think we only have, like, what is it, Daryl, two people that cut trees, three people that, what, what do we have? I remember hearing this in some meeting about the number of tree-cutting people that we actually have in the city. Can it be this hard? <laughs> no, I was just going to say, you know, just the issue you think is going to be a no-brainer. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no I spoke. Can there, a premise said no, no climbing in trees. Can we put that? Right. There is no climbing of trees. This is just for low-hanging branches, okay, about two inches above the actual soil level, and non-powered tools. It's an ISA-certified permit, International Society of Arboriculturists, and basically what this does, it allows you to trim trees with hand tools, and it's just at the bottom. Crepe myrtles have been taken out of our inventory based on how they stain vehicles, the leaves and the berries and the fruits, so we're going with other species. But again, this is to help us with our backlog, and residents can actually partake in tree trimming, and it's just at a lower level. I'd just like to track how many come, come down and take the test and the permit. And well, I, I can tell you, you know, some neighborhoods are extremely sensitive to trees. And a good example is, Daryl, you may have heard when I think the city had hired a company or, no, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the power company had hired Sorry. a company to come in and trim trees, mm -hmm. trim crate myrtles, and just butchered them. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you one particular neighborhood, <coughs> it was almost a revolution. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was extremely serious. Right. Uh, I mean, children are crying. Mm -hmm. or it's, it's just, I mean, I was getting emails over this. Right. So it, it bothers me now if we allow, let's say, a permit that somebody comes and cuts certain trees. Let's say mm -hmm. they get the permit, they take the class, and they just decide to cut it any way they want anyhow. Right. Well, Councilman Protegero, a couple of things. One, if a permit's issued, we will have staff on site. They're not just going to have free reign to trim any type of tree any no, type wait, of way. I'm not going to send somebody out there to watch them trim the two trim the two crate marbles. Well, actually, what happens... I thought happens, we were trying to relieve <laughs> staff. Yeah, exactly. oh, what happens is... We have a city forester that drives by. I know. I would hope that basically that our guys would take a peek to see that, make sure they're not wiping out a whole area or neighborhood. The other thing I was going to say, too, is when you talk about Dominion Power's <coughs> trimming standards, they trim just for line clearance. Yeah, they have no standards. Exactly. It's whatever they want. They, <laughs> we, need to, we need to sit down and talk with them about These it. are only branches that are two inches. Yes, two inches smaller. above. Yeah. yeah. And they're what? down at the low yes, level. At the base of the tree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Maybe I think we sh did we send this to a committee anywhere. to study this? Maybe the tree, the tree commission. commission. The tree commission. The I'd like to move. Right. Is already. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, who decided to get rid of the crepe myrtles? Well, actually, Fred Hugh, it's rolling in his grave. Would it over in his grave? <laughs> That's get, another whole discussion. But I'd like to. <laughs> Norfolk's been known for its crepe myrtles. Yes, sir. I understand that, but we get so many complaints with damaged automobiles and yeah. things like that from the berries and actually the fruit and the flowers that come from the trees that drop. Well, crepe myrtles could always go on um, medians where they don't um, that is necessarily correct. hit mm -hmm. cars, but mm -hmm. they do bring bees. I'm okay, sorry. all right. Okay. Bees, okay. bees, bees, and birds. You've got to get staff to get the support of people that are going to run in to get sick their permit. And take Actually, Barkley, I'm surprised you didn't ask them to water as soon as they uh, be started. Yeah. That would be much better. That helps. Okay. Thanks, Daryl. This is we're going to hold our breath. Is the Virginian pilot getting all of this? <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? No. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you. Okay, R14. R14 is an ordinance granting a special exception to operate an entertainment establishment on property located at 330 West 22nd Street, and by a 5-0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval of 
both of these items. And Jennifer Eichhardt <coughs> is here. Okay. Hi. Answer any questions? Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and <coughs> adopt. Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. There, there are no crepe myrtles here, I hope. That's R14A. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption on property located at 330 West 22nd Street. Dispense with the <coughs> charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R15. An ordinance to amend and reordain section 26-5 and 41-26 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 <coughs> as amended and to add one new section numbered 41-10.1 to the Norfolk City Code so as to provide for different hours of collection of waste containers in the downtown area to coordinate with light rail hours of operation and to prohibit obstructing of the light rail guideway by waste containers. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? I just wanted to continue my request of trying to get recycling bins um, at the light rail stations. I don't believe that's been done yet, um, but it would be nice to have that service as well. Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Our 16th middle A resolution approving the guidance document for the Chesapeake Bay Coastal Management Area so as to establish parameters for the use and enjoyment of the coastal area. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Where are we? R17? Seven. An ordinance to repeal one subsection of Section 25-653 and to amend and reordain Sections 25-649, <coughs> 651, 52, and 654 so as to add two right turn on red prohibitions, one U-turn prohibition, three one-way streets, and four stop signs. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. You have some add-ons. I have four additional items, okay. Mr. President. The first is numbered R18, and it's an ordinance approving the terms of a right of entry agreement with Downtown Norfolk Development Corporation trading as Downtown Norfolk <coughs> Council relative to a portion of a certain vacant property located at 100 through 120 East Main Street in the city of Norfolk. Otherwise known as the plot. Okay. As it thickens. Go Dispense ahead. with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Next item is an ordinance to amend and reordain Chapter 2 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 so as to add Article 18, Sections 2 599 through 603, creating a Bicycling and Pedestrian Trails <coughs> Commission and to appoint its members. Dispense with we the charter. this forever. <laughs> no, no, and no. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> with the yeah, exactly. <laughs> for reading the ordinance and adopt, Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? We have some great folks going on this board, too. I'm really excited about this. Aye. Dr. Wibley? Uh, Breck and Tracy, I really thank you. I know you've been pushing hard on this, and it hasn't been easy, so very much. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Gwen? Aye. Mr. Frame? Yes, yes, and yes. Yay. The next item, R20, is a resolution appointing Assistant City Manager Ronald H. Williams, Jr. as an ex officio member of the Board of Directors of the Southeastern Public Service Authority of Virginia for a certain term. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. <coughs> Frame? All right. Does he get combat pay for going over there? For the yeah, but, uh, does he? All right, okay. And the last item is a resolution appointing or reappointing 45 persons to four boards and four commissions for certain terms. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. I did? Okay, that concludes the formal portion of tonight's agenda. Thank you.